Brett, take us back to 2006. You guys are playing number two Auburn early in the season. Not a lot of people expecting you to win. You go down there and dominate the Tigers. Arkansas is in a situation this week. They're 18 and a half point dogs. There's not a lot of people that expect them to win, much less compete against the Georgia Bulldogs outside this state. What was the mindset y'all had heading into that game? Just we were confident that we could win, and, that, and that's what was key about that. Is we thought we were going in there to win the football game, and, and we believed every bit that we could. And so we didn't go in there, you know, worried about the crowd or worried that their preseason ranking, their ranking at the current time. Uh, and it was just like go out there and play football, and that's what makes it a, a, this team a dangerous team is because they they believe that they have that fight in them. They they're controlling the line of scrimmage, and and if they can can do that, they can go out there and actually have a legitimate chance. Now, obviously the the point spread, you know, scares a lot of people away from that because you're like, well, you know, I thought we were, you know, in top ten team, and you wouldn't think that would be a point spread. Um, but everybody has a lot of respect for Georgia, and, and they've done it over the years. So um, now, now's our time to kind of go out there and, and get more respect and, and go out there and just play hard. Brett, one of the topics we've been kicking around today is the question of which is the bigger game for the Southeastern Conference in college football? Is it Ole Miss taking on the Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa, or is it Arkansas heading to Athens to take on the Bulldogs? Take yourself out of your Arkansas hat for a sec. Which is the bitter, bigger game when you look at the outlook of the Southeastern Conference? You know, it's such a hard question because you got Lane Kiffin and there, everything goes on with that, and then you've got Sam Pittman you know, making his first trip back to Georgia. Um, obviously, that's an SEC West game, so I'd probably say that that means a little bit more on the Western division uh, because it matters on the Western side. Now, this is an SEC football game between Arkansas and Georgia, but they're both big point spreads. That, that's what's hard to look at. You, you go down the board of a lot of college football this week, and there's a lot of teams that one's ranked and one's not, and it's a one-point, you know, margin. So these two matchups here are really going to say, how good Arkansas and Ole Miss are, but how good is Alabama and Georgia, and are they going to take that next step up on either side of the football? You know, who's going to make their mark moving forward in this week five? Yeah, you were a part of a of a game in 06 where game day was in Fayetteville. This is obviously in Athens, but you know, if you could pull the unthinkable and you could shock the world and all the cliches, and win that game, all the all the media is there to to observe that and then to to springboard that for you, springboard that forward into next week's game and the coverage. Tremendous opportunity. I just think about what it would be for the college football world and just the story. Of, take take your Razorback fandom out of it a minute, Brett. If you had a weekend where the unthinkable happens and Arkansas wins and Ole Miss beats Alabama, you talk about just a, a huge storyline for college football and then reshaping the the very front end of the college football playoff. I don't think that's what's going to happen this weekend is two upsets at the top, but it's delicious to think about for a few minutes. It really is. And if that were to happen, obviously it'd be magical for, for both programs. I'm um, trying to make that next step towards, you know, trying to get to that college play, football playoff. We haven't been there. Um, obviously Ole Miss, you know, we, everybody knows the history. So if, if it were to happen, it, it puts that conversation out there, but it's a long season. And, and the biggest thing that, it would do, especially as Arkansas, is it just gains that much more respect. Yeah. It makes it, you know, we're that much more legitimate as a football team. We're tough. Um, probably puts a little bit people, you know, scares a little people because we're, if we control that offense and defensive line, that we have brought back that toughness. And we're not the laughing stock of, of college football, not, not even the SEC, all college football. Um, so we, we gain that respect full heartedly. And that would be the big key for us moving forward. Is, you know, we're just we're back, and it's going to be great for the state of Arkansas if we were able to do that. Well, let's get back to reality. Georgia's really good. I mean, they're number two in the country. They're an 18 point favorite in this game for a reason. One of the matchups that's it's going to be key anytime Arkansas takes the field is who is the center for Georgia. I was looking. There's up Cedric Van Praan started last week, redshirt freshman. This will be his fifth start in his career. Um, He's going to go up against John Ridgway, who doesn't have a lot of starts at the SEC level, but we've seen what he's been able to do. Uh, walk us through those those matchups on that front line. Arkansas was able to get pressure last week on A&M with three. Can they do that against this Georgia offensive line, who's going to be more seasoned, particularly at the tackle spots? Can Arkansas get pressure with three and drop eight this week against Georgia? I think that's the biggest question for for this defense and Barry Odom. How what, what kind of what's our play scheme going to be? What are we going are we going to go out and blitz more? Are we going to try and just get pressure with the three because Georgia is is legitimate on offense. We all saw what they did last week. Um, Vanderbilt's not a you know sixty two to nothing terrible team. Georgia's really really good uh, on offense and on defense. And so 
there's a reason they're up there in the rankings. So if we get pressure and, and we get, you know, just get around, we don't necessarily have to get a bunch of sacks, just get in his face and make the quarterback feel like he has to hurry. Maybe we can get a, a fast throw out and, and get an interception because if you can get the turnover battle and win the field of position, you know, we are, we'll be in this football game. And if we're close, I think we have a legitimate chance to, to steal a possession and, and get, gain the lead to have an opportunity to win. Uh, but it's really going to rely on that defensive front. They've got to get after uh, that, that really good Georgia offensive line on the outside, especially. And, and they're going to try and control the clock. They're going to try and control the tempo. They're in their home stadium, so they know that they're going to be on the snap, their same snap cadence. Um, so it's going to be a lot. Everything's going to be in their favor. We, we, we were playing an uphill battle, and we just kind of got to get after them. Mm-hmm. Started the season, obviously, Georgia started the season playing Clemson. They were fifth ranked in the in the very beginning of the year in the opening poll, but beating Clemson elevated them to number two ever since. UAB, South Carolina, Vanderbilt, now Arkansas this week has been the goal. Do you think we know about Georgia at this point? I mean, is is what we have seen through four games enough evidence, or is that Clemson game with what Clemson has, has kind of unpacked and unfolded since then leave you any room to – it, where's the crack here? Where's the belief for this week if you're a Razorback fan? Well, I think the belief that you have to have is in, is in our coaching staff. If, if there is a crack, if there is a hole, if there, there's a weakness that they have, you got to put our heart into this coaching staff. We have been Our game plan has been so good over the last two years, actually being prepared for these type of games. They're going to find that. And, and they watch the film, they study it. People, that, this is their job to just study the analytics and the film. So we're going to find those holes but also knowing that they're going to find ours. So it's going to be a battle of scheme plus athletes going at it on this field. And I think they do. Not every team is perfect. Nobody's perfect. Even Alabama, all the years they won national championships, they haven't been perfect. There has been a weakness. It's just you exploit that weakness and kind of get after them. And then it starts up front. And that's what's been so good about our Arkansas team is we've been pretty good on the offense and defensive line. And if we can do that against a Georgia that hasn't had quite the schedule that we have, uh, beating a Texas and an A&M, um, maybe it did show that we are a lot better than people give us credit for. Brett Good with us here on the Morning Rush. Brett, you talk about weaknesses. The Kansas City Chiefs seem to have a weakness with their defense right now. Got a chance to go to Arrowhead for the first time ever and surrounded a lot of sad and frustrated Kansas City fans because Justin Herbert carved them up. Is They're starting out one and two. They're last in the division behind the Chargers, the Raiders, and the Broncos. Is there trouble brewing in Kansas City right now with Patrick Mahomes and company? I think so. Their defense is – one thing, their, their offense has turned the ball over a, a lot more than they're used to. And so it's put the defense in a lot of tough situations. But their defense used to hold on those situations. So uh, it's still early in the season. They, they, we've added a game. We're playing 17 games this year. It, it, they're going to get it going, you hope, as a Kansas City fan. And it just uh, the, the defense is going to have to step it up. Um, so is Tampa Bay. Their, their defense is not looking good right now for their defending champs. So it's, it's going to be interesting this week going into it and seeing kind of who comes out this weekend. You bring up the Cowboys. They won Monday night against the Eagles. How good are the Cowboys? We've got a lot of fans listening that are Cowboy fans. Is, is this a legitimate team that can not only get to the play, win the division, get to the playoffs? Can they? Is this a team that can make some noise in the playoffs this year? Uh, from what it looks like, yes. they, they got to keep growing. Their defense is, is obviously doing well. They're, I mean, they ran the ball almost 40 times uh, in this last game. They're controlling that tempo, just like we were talking about the Arkansas game. They're controlling the line of scrimmage. They've been dominant up there. They've got a two-headed monster in running back, and, and they're really good. They were close to winning against Tampa. So they've got a legitimate football team, and, and Dak is just going to gain more confidence as we move forward down the season, and that's going to be dangerous for a lot of football teams. It, you know, as he gets more confident with his foot down there, uh, that he's fully healthy, and as, as those receivers kind of everybody gets in that momentum and gets on this ride, that they'll be a dangerous football team, and they should win their division. Brett, when you look at the NFL, they have that Thursday night slot kind of locked up, and I know that there occasionally is a is a lesser college football game on, but the majority of people that are sports fans are watching Thursday night football, regardless if it's a good game or not. Now. Maryland and Iowa play this Friday night. Uh, Maryland hosting a top five team in the country. I know Mike Loxley's not happy about that. There have been games that Arkansas has participated in that have been on Thursday night. What do you think about the prospect of the SEC moving forward in years to come, trying to put more games on Thursday and Friday night? Is that something you'd be interested in watching and, and seeing the conference do? 
you're very interested in it. I love everybody loves watching football. The problem with the NFL on the Thursday night is once you set these games, there's no flex uh, scheduling for these. So if you preseason, you're looking at them, you're saying, okay, these two teams are going to be good. We can get some good TV ratings to make them a prime time game. Then you come out here and you're like, these teams aren't very good. So then nobody watches the game, nobody cares about it, and your ratings kind of tank. And that's that's one thing that you worry about from an SEC standpoint and everybody's standpoint. Uh, you know, you started all these midweek games started with teams trying to get TV exposure, and if the if the games aren't good, nobody's going to watch. And you got to remember that people are working during the week, people have activities during the week, and so you've got to be really cautious about it because you don't want to lose a lot of viewership of putting a bad product out on the field. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you one more uh, special team, or ask a special teams question before we go, because I, I think if you if you watch a lot of football, you're noticing a growing trend in the punt game, and I want you to explain it because. It, the last few seasons, certainly this year, the angle punting where the, the snap's coming to, across the field at an angle and you're seeing that shift, why are teams – what's the advantage to do that and why are so many teams doing that now when they punt the football? Well, one thing that you're trying to do is you're trying to make the field a third. You're, you're basically taking the whole football field and putting it over to the angle of the sideline and get the punter over there. You know, the field is it's a big field. If you can control that, and work on those angles, you've got a better chance to kind of corral that receiver down there and the returner and, and kind of just getting down. And then the other aspect of it, your punter can also punt the other way to confuse the return team. So it's, it's a really good concept. Uh, you look at a lot of kickoffs. Everybody does the same thing. You're trying to punt, kick and punt in certain directions to minimize the amount of field that your guys have to go down there and cover. And it really allows you, if you get a good punt and good guys getting a good release, you can make some good noise down there and have a chance. That, you know, if the guy was to muff it, you're going to be right there on the sideline, so the ball is going to be in play there, and it's really good for our special. How do you snap on an right. angle? They've been, they've been positive. How do you snap well, on angle, an angle? The angle's tough. The angle's tough, but the problem is the, the good thing about snapping on that is they're not blocking. You know, the, the, the college game, they don't have to block. They can. Everybody can release as soon as the ball snap. Well, the NFL, only the two outside guys can release mm-hmm. until the ball's kicked. So in college, it's easier to snap on an angle because you realize you don't have any responsibilities in blocking. If you do, you're kind of rubbing a shoulder on a guy, but you're not responsible uh, in a punt pro protection like you would be in the NFL. So it, it allows that freedom to, hey, just worry about the snap, get down the field, and try and make a tackle. All right. One or two things real quick that has to happen for Arkansas to pull the upset this weekend. Control the line of scrimmage. Uh, I think in, in a game like this, we're going to have to control the, the time of possession. And if we can do those two things that, and kind of play our game and not get into, hey, we're down by 18 points, we've got to come out of our game plan, then, you know, that everything kind of goes out the window there. So you just stick with your game plan and then you do that by controlling the line of scrimmage and the time of possession. All right, if you're a business owner, the human resource person that's developing your game plan for health benefits, you need to call our buddy Brett right here, 651-2292. Brett, tell us what you do because I know everyone's looking for – the best deal and the best products right now with health insurance and retirement plans, everything for employee benefits. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we're going through the market marketplace for everybody, really trying to gain plan for everything. And the biggest thing that, you know, I'm trying to sell is myself. I'm trying to sell the same attitude and effort that I put in for, for 10 years in the NFL to, to give to these clients and say, hey, I'm, I'm all in for you. Um, and, and you can call me anytime and we'd love to discuss it. All right, 651 651- 2292. Call or text that number 651. That's 479 651 2292. All right, we'll talk to you next week and hopefully about a 5 0 Razorback team. We'll see if they can pull it off in Athens. That'd be awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. All right, Brett Good. We're back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back for another football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With the new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to your website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Don't forget to use our promo code believe to receive your bonus that's b-l-e-a-v from football basketball boxing right to your favorite vegas casino games don't wait to take advantage of these amazing offers for the 2021 season bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports bet online where the game starts